Welcome everyone to this real life trading, real life trading recording where I'm going to interview a real life trader named Chief. Uh, my name is Brad Reed and I am also a real life trader and I would like to encourage you to be good and by good I mean get out of debt, achieve your financial dreams and give generously to your community. Welcome everyone. Thanks for watching this video in chief. Say hello to everyone. Hello everyone. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Chief, so uh, introduce yourself. Tell us about you. How'd you get the nickname Chief? Well, uh, Chief comes from uh, the family dog. Uh, and in Spanish, Chief is El Jefe, mm -hmm. uh, which a lot of times we call our fathers El Jefe and, or our boss. So, yeah, that's how I got it. And I stole that idea from Indiana Jones, the Temple of, of Doom. So... Um, I just started using it and uh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like it too. I think everyone else does like it. Uh, tell us about, uh, I don't know, give us a brief overview of your life. Who are you? Uh, what have you been up to and how'd you get to trading? Well, okay. Brief overview. Um, I've always been interested in trading. I think in high school there was a teacher looking at his newspaper and, and looking at the stocks, and this was back in uh, 1980s, and uh, just scanning the, the, the business newspaper. And, uh, and I went up to him, and he started just sharing a little bit. And from that point on, I got really intrigued with the stock market. And then as time went on, um, I started learning more and more. And... Um, what really kicked it off for me was I was working with uh, uh, Boeing and McDonnell Douglas. Uh, I was in aerospace and then um, wow. I got laid off and I went into other businesses. And um, in 2016, I, they gave me my pension and, um, and they said, we're not going to handle it anymore. So I put it into Schwab. And, um, Oh, so they closed out your pension. Yeah. And I had to roll it over gave you cash value. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I had to roll it over into an IRA. Um, and, but before that, just a little bit before that I was, um, over a hundred thousand dollars in debt in, uh, 20, uh, 2008, I was over a hundred thousand dollars in debt getting ready to lose my house. And we went through uh, the Dave Ramsey's uh, snow, snowball debt consolidation and my wife and I put our heads together and, and we had managed to get out of debt, which was awesome. And then this gift came along that I had no idea it was uh, even coming. And so I went to um, one of those mutual places where they sell mutual funds and tell you that you could get 8% um, a year and they'll take their fees. And I said, no, thank you. And so I just rolled it into a, a Schwab account where I could manage it myself. And from that point, I, um, I just started growing it. And I thought, this is really awesome. And I started looking for um, teachers and guidance uh, online. And, and then in 2017, in July, that's when I found um, Jeremy. And uh, I started learning about these gap and goes that he was giving these free YouTube videos, which I thought he was nuts. I mean, you're giving this information for free and not making money off of you. <laughs> I well, thought that is just amazing. In all fairness, chief, he is nuts, but he's <laughs> yeah. really cool and super and awesome and wonderful and smart. Very true. Very true. Well, I did um, three trades. One of them was um, Caterpillar. And um, the other one was uh, Capital One, and with and the other one was iRobot back in 2017, before I was even a, a member. And uh, with those three trades, I had enough money to pay for a whole year's worth of of membership, which I wow. joined in January, uh, 2018 this year. So. And I've just been growing by leaps and bounds. I'm so grateful to be a part of this family. And I really do consider um, everybody in the real life trading team as family. It's just, they're an amazing group of people. Um, everybody's been so helpful and, and just 
I'm just in awe of the of, the, of this group. Well, and, Chief, uh, you're, you're you're very kind, and obviously, it's that kind of energy why so many people like you and. You know, I got to uh, spend a couple of days with you uh, back at the retreat not too long ago. And um, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not going to get on this video and say that, that Chief is the most awesome person in the world. But I will say this. I have not seen Chief and the most awesome person in the world in the same room at the same time. So <laughs> uh, you, you just might be that person, Chief. Um, so Chief, when we were together, uh, there was a bunch of us. We all had our laptops out. We were all trading together. And there was a, I want to say it was Disney that we were looking at and a couple of us uh, got trapped on that one. And you're like, yeah, okay. I made a profit. And we were like, what, how did you make a profit on that? So tell us a little bit about your, um, your, your trading and your strategies and what you look for, uh, how you pick your strikes when you do options. Uh, tell us, tell us your magic. Um, what I do is I trade weekly options at the most, I'll go out two weeks, like if it's on on Thursday and I, I feel that it could still go up, uh, I'll trade um, the next week over and I'll hold it. And I only trade um, one R at the most uh, or half an R if I'm not sure. And so I'll, I'll risk, uh, uh, what is it, uh, absolute zero mm -hmm. on it. And, um, and sometimes, um, if, if I'm putting more money in than, than the R, then I have to put the stop in. So I'll put the stop on it, on the, on the option so that I don't continue to lose money. I've, that's the, the one mistake that I, I kept doing over and over before I joined, uh, real life trading was I would put more than my, my R and then when it went against me, Instead of going to absolute zero, it would go below because I didn't have uh, risk mitigation on, on the line. So um, that's helped me a lot. All right. I'm just going to try and take notes here as you're going. So you use weekly options and you'll go out to the next Friday if you're trading like on a Thursday and you think it'll run. Uh, you never risk more than one R and you use stops on the option price if the uh, value of the option is greater than an R. Yeah, and I, try to, I, I try to make the delta uh, more than 40. So mm -hmm. that's one of the things I, I make sure. So do you try and keep the delta between about 0.5 and 0.4 on your entry? Correct, yeah. Chooses a strike with delta between 0 0.4 and 0. 0.4. 5.0. Obviously, those are negative if you're using puts. So that's yes. going to get you a strike either at the money or a little bit out of the money. Yes. Sometimes I'm in the money. Sometimes I'm out of the money. What else? What else is part of your strategy? Um, I can't. With weekly options, it, it limits uh, what you can trade because uh, there's not too many um, weekly options. But the other thing is, if there is, I want to make sure that the option moves a lot. So like on, on um, uh, FDX, it moves a lot. And that's one of my favorite plays, FedEx. Mm -hmm. And I like to play FedEx uh, before earnings, like two weeks before earnings, because implied volatility, the anticipation, and uh, I usually play those uh, on a daily to two days and I'm out the next day. Very cool. Uh, yeah, I do really good with, with uh, FedEx, especially right before earnings. I've been doing it, I think, for three quarters now. So. Really? Yeah. Likes FedEx. We'll have to check out FedEx too. What is FedEx doing today? Down, 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 baby, down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so this recording is on October 10th of 2018. And like many things in uh, October of se uh, pretty much any year, things are going down. These are some uh, lines I had 
from a while back. So those are hidden. Cool. So you like FedEx and yeah, earnings. So earnings have already happened on FedEx. Yeah, but right before earnings is you see the, the candles climbing up higher. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones I was playing. Oh, wow. So nice, Chief. Not, uh, I do stay out of it once uh, the day before earnings, I'm out. I won't trade it. I won't trade through earnings. I've been burned too many times. Yeah. Gets or stays out the day before earnings. Very cool. So uh, tell us more. What else? Uh, if someone wanted to copy your strategy, what more would they need to know? I mean, what sort of shapes do you look for? Uh, I look for the... Um, is it always a gap and go? Do you um, look for retests of the volume weighted I, average price or double tops? I like the high wave candle. And I've been, uh, since, since the retreat, I started using the, the three minute high wave candle. Like a high wave candle on the three minute chart. Like, so for the first candle? Yeah, kind of like the video you had right before. It was a five minute um, candle. Yeah, so for those of you that want to check out that video, come over here to YouTube, Real Life Trading 5. And it's this one right here, the day trade, the five minute reversal candle. So that's, so Chief, you're basically day trading a three minute reversal candle or high wave candle, right? Correct, yeah. Very cool. And uh, do you do both gap and goes and retest gaps? Yes. Very cool. And I guess just like some of the other gaps, it has to gap across a pivot. Um, how do you set your targets and when do you adjust your protective stops? Um, the way I adjust my um, protective stops is once it passes the the top of the high wave candle or below if I'm doing puts, mm -hmm. I'll start putting my stops on, on there, make sure I keep my profits. And uh, I'm, I'm usually hitting one and a half R's, one and a quarter R's and um, I'm out. Um, I take everything. So I, I, I trade by um, 10 contracts and the few times that I take um, half of those contracts, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't do very well with the, with the follow through on the rest. So I've just learned to just take it all, walk away with a profit. So you don't shoot for the moon. You just lock it in when you can. Right. And that's probably when, why that, that day that the rest of us took a small loss, you were like, yeah, I, I won. <laughs> Because you just locked it in. So um, now we say lock it in when you can, and that can mean a lot of different things for a lot of different people. Does that mean that if you, if it's not just convincingly in your favor, you'll do a market exit, or you will lower your stop, or you'll raise a target and, and get a limit fill, or when you, if someone were to say, "What do you mean by lock it in?" How would you explain to a new trader what you're talking about? I just take the the market order. I I don't I don't uh, do the the follow. Um, keep following it on a on a fifteen or on a on a five minute. Gotcha. So if uh, you're yeah. in it, um, maybe you're you're looking for a bullish trade, and all of a sudden a bunch of big bearish volume comes in. Um, you can just say uh, to heck with it. I'm up. I'm just going to close it out and and keep it. Correct. Yeah. And sometimes I'll do the same if I'm wrong. Once I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And, and uh, instead of, even if I went with half an hour, I'll, I'll, instead of making it go absolute zero, I'll, I'll take um, whatever I can with a loss so that I don't have to lose everything. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that would be up here on number two, right? Like Yeah absolute zero and for those of you watching this video that don't know what absolute zero is once again you can go to um, YouTube search for real life trading and uh, absolute zero and basically it's just when you uh, choose an op an option price 
that is less than your maximum allowable loss. So for instance, me personally, my maximum loss is $200. So that means I can buy an option price at $2 or less. And so if it does go to zero, I am out $200 or less. August says, uh, pick your clothes price and sometimes it will fill. Is that what you do sometimes, Chief? Correct, yes. I'll put it in and, and if it fills, it fills. I don't Very second guess it. So when you lower your, your stops, is it mostly intuitional or do you have hard, fast rules on um, waiting for a swing or the moving averages to come down or anything like that? I do wait for the moving averages to come down. I'll check out the, the five and then I'll move into the 15 minute. So if I'm running into, especially later on in the day, I'll go into the 15 minute. Okay, and 15 minute EMA later in the day. Very cool. Uh, anything else that we would need to know about your option strategies? How'd you, oh. how'd you get into options? Why did you choose options over, over shares? I, I like the, 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 uh, the amount of money I can make so quickly. <laughs> Compared to, I, I guess I'm more of a risk person. Just like, I've seen, uh, I've, I've, I've seen the, the amount of gain that you can do with with options. The leverage is just incredible. So when you are choosing deltas at the point four to point five, when you're right, the options will gain value very quickly, and when you're wrong, they will lose value very slowly. And yeah, that's. That's one of the things that we all like about options. But of course, then uh, number four there is very important. You gotta be sure that the uh, option price will move a lot because some of them just don't do that. Do you have a list of stocks that you will only trade or how do you um, choose what to trade in the morning? Um, I do have a list. I mean, I think it's the list that everyone has, but. I like to make sure that the volume is above 750 on the, in the stock. Uh, so okay. It, so above 750 K. Yeah. Cause sometimes you're, you're watching some, some stocks out there that don't meet my criteria. Mm -hmm. So I know I can't trade them. Gotcha. But do you have like a set list that you look at just about every day? Yeah. Which are the same ones, uh, Baba, NVIDIA, SPY, Apple, uh, Netflix, Lululemon. So you have a constant watch list of tickers that meet your option criteria. And we'll explore stocks not on your list if they are above 750K. Per day average volume, yeah, yep. Groovy, man. This is a uh, this is pretty specific. This is stuff that other traders can look at and give it a shot and and know how to uh, not get in and get out. Uh, I don't know if you can see the chat pane, but Vin Man saying thanks for the interview and August is throwing out some tips and Ram is, is sharing some of his stuff as well. Uh, what is the typical time frame that you are in an options trade? Um, a while ago, you said you might hold it for a day or two. Is that normal or are you usually in and out in 30 minutes or four hours? Or um, I would say uh, normally for me, it's about four hours if I'm, if I'm day trading something. Um, the fastest trade I think I, I did was uh, NVIDIA 15 minutes and I gained uh, a 2R in 15 minutes. Wow. I don't remember when, um, but it was – just amazing. I was, yeah, yeah. Beto says nice. And yeah, I agree. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And those kind of things make me addicted to, to options. Yeah. Um, it sounds like one of the reasons you like options is the same that I do. And it's sort of this, this Delta curve and I'm kind of going to hit this because Nitro is asking about it. Um, the value of the option does not move. Uh, dollar for dollar, penny, penny with the value of the stock. So the reason Chief chooses uh, a delta of around 
0.5 to 0.4 is that if he's right, the value of the option will increase very quickly. And if he's wrong, it will decrease very slowly. And so this figure S here that I've drawn is uh, the delta curve and delta changes as, uh, as the value of the stock goes up and down. Um, and of course, that's when you get into gamma. There's a whole bunch of uh, Greeks in it. But uh, yeah. if we're given, if we're taking the 10 hour uh, lesson on the Greeks and shorten it down to uh, 30 seconds, basically with uh, the delta, as you were right, the delta will increase and the rate that the value of the option will increase uh, will accelerate. Whereas if you were wrong and the stock moves against you, the rate that the value of the option will decrease will decelerate. Again, that's uh, several hours worth of studying, but uh, just trying to make it simple. So Ram says, do we need to check for Delta for day trading? Chief? I, I believe so. I always check it. I'm always checking Delta to see where I'm going to enter. Right. So uh, Delta is just for options, not for shares. Nitro says, is he picking options in the money or out of the money? So Nitro, uh, he said Delta is between 0.4 and 0.5. So that is either at the money or very slightly out of the money. Cool. And also, what is, if you notice ahead. on the on the weekly options newsletter, he's always in the money, and his deltas, Jeremy's deltas, mm -hmm. uh, are usually at sixty seven around there in his. So, uh, and that's why they move so nicely. Yeah. So, uh, Jeremy, well, some traders like stocks uh, or, or like options that are slightly in the money, and that's basically because the dominant value of the option is its real intrinsic value if you were to uh, execute the value of that option right away. Um, realize that uh, the value of options has to do with their intrinsic value, their ability to be used immediately, and their extrinsic value, which is basically the hope that it someday they will be worth something. And when you have val uh, options that are out of the money or maybe even significantly out of the money, it's all about hope. The value of the option is determined mostly by volatility and theta and um, yeah, volatility and theta. Uh, for the options that are in the money, the predominant driving force is going to be delta, uh, a little bit gamma and those things, uh, also volatility but those things that can be used immediately. And so uh, chief picks stocks that are at the money or slightly out of the money because there is a, uh, because they're going to be cheaper than some of the others. And then uh, if he's right, they will become in the money very quickly and then solidifies that base value of the option. Correct. Yeah. So uh, chief options are complex. What were you doing before you were trading options or did you just jump straight into options? No, I was doing uh, writing covered calls. Gotcha. So, okay. So yeah. you had shares of stock and you would write covered calls against them and that's how you kind of learned about options. Yeah. That's how I learned about options is like, Oh, there's calls going on. I can get money every month for the shares that I own. And I thought, that was brilliant. And then I didn't know that I can own just the options without owning the stock. So uh, that was a eye opener. Well, your strategy, the way it's laid out here, uh, I would say is very complex for someone who's just getting in. Um, but I like the way you've described, it seems like it would be fairly easy to implement and as I've been talking to people about trading plans over the last couple of days and weeks is that if your trading plan isn't easy to implement, then it's, you know, fairly worthless. I, I like easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, well, and if it's easy and it can be consistent, but for, for new traders, this is complex stuff. Um, you know, this I agree is, with that. It, it is. It's so how many years were you trading before you, before you got this strategy going? I'd say at least five, 
maybe eight years before. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that's yeah, that's a good good amount. So, Chief, uh, you are crushing it with uh, day trading options. What is next for you? Is this what you're going to do for the rest of your trading career? Are you building? Are you looking at other strategies? I'm looking at um, naked puts. One of the things I was I was so afraid of uh, put sales before I joined uh, this family. I I was like, stay away from those. Those are dangerous. Uh, don't touch them with a 10 foot pole, but then uh, with, with um, learning from Jeremy and saying, how about owning something at a discount? I uh, just opened up my eyes to that one phrase right there, own it at a discount. And, uh, and so I have, I've, I, I haven't really gotten into um, trading the, the put sales, but I'm, I'm moving slowly into that to, to gain more knowledge and, and uh, I do some paper trades and then I, uh, um, I, I try to do maybe one contract, just tippy toe in. Man, that is so important. And I'm so glad you said that with any strategy, even if it's, uh, you know, naked puts or if you're going to try chief strategy, um, notice the first thing you said, I'm trying to learn about it, right? You're studying, you're watching videos, you're, you're reading, um, Matt DeLong of Real Life Trading has been sharing a lot of information lately about naked puts. Uh, and then Chief said step two was that he's uh, trading it virtually, which means trading it with fake money. And then step three is trying it with a very small amount of real money. So Chief, thanks for saying that. Any strategy that people do, uh, they should try it out that way. And Chief, I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit. Is that how you came to this day trading strategy? Or maybe is that more what you wish you would have done? Uh, wish I would have done. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone has that, that story yeah. at some point. Yeah, I've taken some pretty good hits, some pretty good losses. Um, my, my wife, uh, Sue, before um, real life trading, she always thought I was gambling and, and, and thought I was nuts for putting any money in the stock market. And then... Uh, um, I think it was in March, maybe two months after being with Real Life Trading. She says, you know what? There's something to this. And, and now she's also fallen in love with the people. And, uh, and, and then the next step is I, I want her to be my, my definitely accountability partner that makes sure that I'm sticking to the plan, that I'm not veering off. Uh, so she's educating herself as well so she can see exactly what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> who said, am I still married? <laughs> August says you're still married after getting into stock trading. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, everyone that I have talked to that has met your wife says she is absolutely amazing. Oh, Sue's here. She says, I'm his biggest fan. Well, uh, Sue, you've got <laughs> lots of fans here and I uh, can't wait to meet you. Um, and uh, Sue, I'm going to ask you if you don't mind typing in the chat pane and uh, Chief, Chief or I will, will read it aloud for the video. And then Chief, I'm gonna ask you live while she's typing, uh, how did you and Sue work together to come to the decision that this was something that you wanted to do going forward? Because one of the most commonly asked questions that uh, Jeremy and I and Blake and Latoya get here at Real Life Trading is, I wanna get into stock trading, but my spouse doesn't support it. What were the steps, what were the conversations that uh, you guys went through and did to come to this decision together? Um, I'll say it, well, she could type it in, but the biggest thing that she, she saw, and it wasn't, it was someone else uh, evaluating us. Uh, we have a business, it's an Airbnb business, uh, and my wife has um, just, uh, made made an awesome thing of it but the biggest thing was um a plan she saw the plan that i had in play uh with with the stock market and she realized oh this you have a plan you have an exit there's a strategy to what you're doing you're not just gambling and so i think that was the biggest eye-opening uh situation for her so uh, but with Airbnb, we had a plan, and then we just grew that plan and grew that plan. And, and uh, oh, and for those who don't know, Airbnb is short-term rentals, short-term vacation rentals. 
Yeah, Sue's got in the, uh, the chat pane here, it says, um, it fits our life's new goal that whatever we do going forward to make money, we have to make money through the internet. So yeah, your, your Airbnb, uh, how does that, there may be people that don't know what Airbnb is. So like you said, it's a short-term vacation rental. Um, how do people find out about it? Where is it? Tell us about it. Um, Airbnb is a San Francisco based company that has uh, grown to over 191 countries. Wow. And it's all in um, internet based and on an app, an app on your phone. So if you don't download Airbnb um, onto your phone, then you can just start uh, renting rooms or houses or boats. We've stayed on boats, um, cabins, tree houses, and it's all on Airbnb. It's, and we've done it all. It's just been awesome. And then my wife created a a um, a, a form to help other people create a six figure income. So she started doing online courses. Wow. So, uh, she, she started speaking on stage. I started going on stage with her and, and sharing it. And then, um, and so that, that became online also because she does coaching on uh, one on one coaching. She does, um, she sells her courses online and who's ever interested in that. It's a uh, Sue at vacation rentals in LA.net mention R L T and uh, I'm sure she'll give you a discount that you're part of this family. Let me type uh, that in on the screen for those watching the video. Sue. Did you say Sue or Yella? No, no, just Sue. Sue at vacation rentals. In LA dot net. Like that. Yes. And so mention, if you want to learn more about that, there you yeah. go. Yeah, Sue's um, very. We share everything. It's a, uh, she's very giving. So, um, yeah, and just mentioned that you're part of our our RLT family um, because she gets uh, a lot of uh, inquiries from all over. So right now we're actually not even in the same house. So I'm surprised that she's listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, very. Well, where is she now? Uh, she's in Santa Monica. I'm in Pico Rivera. So she's hanging out with her mom. Ah, uh, gotcha. On vacation. Yeah. And still on the internet making money. Very cool. Uh, yeah. one thing that I wanted to, uh, read that Sue wrote is, uh, and again, this was back in the conversation about what were some of the things that happened when you guys decided together to go ahead and move forward with, uh, trading in the, uh, uh yeah, what the trading was, she says, having a plan that, that helps take the emotion out of trading. Um, and she says that was a game changer. Uh, and yeah, that's a lot of what we talk about here at Real Life Trading is how to get a trading plan. And don't start trading with real money until you do have a plan and until you've tested that plan. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for, uh, uh, for sharing with us. Uh, I know we've got uh, several people live here on the webinar. Uh, do y'all have any questions for, for Chief or Sue? Go ahead and type them in quickly. Um, Chief, anything that, that you'd like to add? And, and Sue, while, while Chief is adding anything, go ahead and type in anything you'd like to add as well. Any um, last thoughts, any advice for people that are either getting into trading, working with their spouse, or going to execute your strategy? I, I would say just keep learning, uh, being, I, I'm amazed uh, at myself how much I've grown since January, since I've joined and made that commitment. You know, it's one thing to be skimming the internet, going from, from guru to guru. But once you say I'm committed to this, committed to real life trading, which I, I you know, hands down, tell everybody to join. And, and, uh, I even share some of the YouTube videos with family members and other people and, and say, come on in, man. It's, it's amazing. It's life changing. So uh, learn, learn, learn. So awesome, Chief. Well, appreciate that. So, so happy that, that you've joined Real Life Trading. And uh, you've been very active with Real Life Trading. I mean, you ask questions, and asking questions is, is, is free, <laughs> you know? And uh, 
you know, if oh. we cannot go ahead, go ahead. Just, just one thing about asking questions. Uh, I love asking questions even to, to answers I already know just so that uh, you could uh, give the answer again. It helps me and I know it helps other people. And uh, I don't feel intimidated by asking um, a question that, that, does, that doesn't seem relevant. And you, you've been awesome just to answer everything. Uh, well, well, thank you, Chief. I appreciate that. We have traders here that have been trading for a week, and we have traders that have been trading here for 20 years. And um, I have not ever once had uh, or heard of an experienced trader saying, oh my gosh, I hate it when you go back and talk about the basics, uh, because a lot of the experienced traders actually appreciate some of those new and beginner questions, because when an experienced trader starts to go on a losing streak, it's usually because he or she has forgotten one of those fundamental basics. Um, and so the constant reminder, uh, the constant new energy, the new people, the new traders, it helps everyone get better. So um, yeah, I appreciate you asking those, those questions. Um, Sue says, as the spouse of a trader, I've seen him lose a lot of money. Uh, but since joining Real Life Trading, he's created a plan and the accountability of the group is priceless. Thank you, Sue, for saying that. Vito is asking, did you start your options trading by just trading one contract at a time? Um, after, after doing writing covered calls, I, I did just do one contract um, to test the waters just because just even the same thing as going into naked puts, I've done one contract and two contracts. Uh, uh, just just to test the water to see if it's working if I'm right in what I'm doing so um, what I like and where I want to go next is definitely uh, put sales because I love um, theta decay working in your favor regardless of the PL. and it's just like that fascinates me it's like wow because when you're when you're doing my strategy uh, theta decay works against me <laughs> So to have it work for me would be uh, awesome. That's an interesting point. Yeah, I thought about that. When you are holding options, Theta's working against you. And when you're selling options, it's working for you. So yeah, that's a very interesting, great point. Sue says, uh, because of the way your trading is going, uh, you guys have made a decision that going forward, your trading is going to be their primary source of income. That's amazing, man. Congratulations. And you've done all this in pretty much, what, a year or less? I mean, I know you said you joined Real Life Trading in, in January, and this is October 10th, but uh, you started doing the options about a year ago, right? Is that what you said? Yes. Uh, yeah, it's just been because Airbnb gives me the ability to be home and, and study and uh, not have to uh, work from nine to five. Uh, it gives me a plenty of time to study, work, and, and then say, hey, what do you think, Sue, about this? And what do you think about that? So um, I think that's the reason that, that we've been able to grow by leaps and bounds, uh, just constantly being on, on it. Even after the market closes, uh, we'll be eating dinner and talking about the different strategies. That's so awesome. When, that's so awesome. when uh, Matt DeLong was giving his course, um, Sue had was able to understand I would say 80% of what he was saying because of the conversations we were having over dinner so that's awesome uh, I, I love stories when people you know that they, they well it's just pretty much any movie that we watch right someone has the struggle and then they get on a plan and then they succeed and then they start crushing it and it sounds like you guys are working well together and you guys are crushing it together so, Chief, thank you so much for doing this this interview. Uh, Sue, thanks for logging on and uh, giving the, the spousal uh, viewpoint. Um, I think when we started this video, it was going to be mostly about the day trading strategy, but I appreciate you guys uh, shifting into the uh, that relationship piece of it because that is such a common question um, and such a hurdle for so many people that, you know, even if they are successful in trading, their, their spouse doesn't understand or doesn't believe and, and appreciate you guys sharing how you uh, have conquered that going forward. Uh, folks, just a last minute note, if you want um, lessons in, in awesomeness or maybe want to uh, learn where you can uh, get 
lessons online in awesomeness or just see some awesomeness videos, uh, email sue at vacationrentalsinla.net. Sue, thank you so much. Chief, thank you so much for your time. Um, it's been an August honor. says, keep rocking your plan. Very nice. And I, uh, that's perfect. Yeah, it's been an honor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Folks, thanks for watching this video. Uh, for more videos like this, swing on over to www.reallifetrading.com. And as always, trade on logic, not on hope. Have a good one, everybody.